in this next segment of um, introductory corporate finance we deal with other areas of corporate financial decision making earlier remember we discussed all five key areas of corporate finance and they include investments capital structure financing dividend and working capital we have already extensively discussed investments decision and so now we quickly summarize the last four beginning with capital structure which we mentioned is virtually the same thing as a firm's debt ratio again there are two key sources of capital available to a firm it's either debt or equity many firms would use a combination of the two for example if a firm's debt ratio is forty percent then it means that automatically its equity ratio would have to be sixty percent a debt ratio of forty percent means for example that if the firm's total capital is a hundred million dollars forty percent of that would be forty million meaning that the firm borrowed forty million of the hundred million the remaining sixty million um, is raised in the form of uh, equity typically common equity the goal of capital structure policy is to determine the firm's optimal debt ratio or if you like to determine the firm's optimal capital structure that's typically the term used and what do we mean by that well the optimal debt ratio would be that debt ratio at which the firm's cost of capital is minimized and therefore the firm's value is maximized now that sounds like a very nice and cute little um, conclusion right there but if you think about it the issue here is that if a firm borrows money there's going to be a cost to it that cost is determined by the interest rate on debt as well there is a cost to equity I mean stockholders are not going to just provide money to a firm free of charge they expect something in return they expect to earn dividends and or they expect uh, capital appreciation so going back going back to debt capital um, typically as you would imagine the more money a firm borrows for any given level of total capital they all things equal the greater would be the firm's cost of debt which is the interest rate applied to the firm's debt and so if for example a firm is worth a hundred million dollars of which forty million is borrowed and then tomorrow the firm goes back and says to the lenders and say hey would like to raise our debt ratio from forty percent to eighty percent in other words would like to borrow a whole lot more now more than likely because the firm is about to raise its um, financial risk exposure meaning the risk of bankruptcy as it were uh, its interest rate on debt would likely increase and so in borrowing a firm realizes that there really are two um, two aspects to it one is a good thing the other is not such a good thing the good thing is borrowed money provides firms with a form of leverage firms are able to use borrowed capital to leverage their equity investment and therefore are able to achieve incremental returns on the invested capital as well within that leverage concept is the fact that the interest payments made on debt capital are tax deductible and so that tax benefit is a non-trivial um, advantage that firms enjoy by using debt capital that advantage does not exist when a firm uses equity now though on the flip side the more money a firm borrows specifically the greater a firm's debt ratio the greater would be the firm's exposure to the risk of bankruptcy because what happens if after borrowing so heavily the investments made with the debt capital do not pan out to be profitable the firm would be really hard pressed to make good on the interest payments as well as pay back the principal when it is due therefore the higher the the firm's debt ratio uh, 
yes the greater would be the benefits associated with debt which is essentially the uh, the uh, interest tax savings associated with it but also the greater would be the firm's exposure to the risk of bankruptcy which is referred to as financial risk bearing that in mind a firm would seek to arrange a capital structure or a debt policy such that it fully utilizes whatever tax benefits that there are associated with the borrowing without unnecessarily jeopardizing its financial future so at least in theory the debt ratio that assures that optimal level where the gains from the use of debt <coughs> excuse me are maximized and the disadvantages associated with the use of debt are minimized would result in the lowest cost of capital beyond that point of course the cost of debt capital would rise and therefore the firm's overall cost of capital would also increase making the firm less desirable to investors financing decisions are generally concerned with how a firm's project is actually financed for example a firm may choose to use internally generated capital internally generated capital would be like retained earnings or the firm may choose to go outside of the firm to raise additional capital which uh, may come in the form of uh, additional borrowed capital which is debt or additional equity in the form of common stock now then dividend policy deals with how the firm's net income is actually divvied up now when a firm makes money in the form of earnings after tax the firm has a choice to either reinvest the money back into the firm in the form of retained earnings or the firm can pay it out to investors in the form of dividends so now the firm has to prudently determine what proportion of its net income would be paid out as dividends the proportion of net income paid out as dividends is referred to as the dividend payout ratio for example if a firm's dividend payout ratio is 40 percent it means that 40 cents of every dollar it earns on an after-tax basis is paid out to stockholders as a dividend distribution the remaining 60 cents on a dollar is reinvested back into the firm now obviously there's an interesting question that is often posed when a firm is seeking to make such a decision and that is does dividend policy affect the value of the firm in other words does a choice between for example a dividend payout ratio of 40 percent versus a dividend payout ratio of 50 percent would such a choice have any impact on the value of the firm because if it does then the firm has to be very careful in making the choice or the, or the decision as to what proportion of its earnings should be reinvested since reinvesting money is a way of ensuring growth now as you get to learn in corporate finance there is some evidence that changes in dividend policy have the potential to affect the firm's value and that's through the signaling effect in other words if a firm were to for example switch from a dividend payout ratio of say 40 percent to 10 percent investors might worry and wonder as to why the firm is doing that maybe the firm is choosing to pay less money because the firm is uh, pessimistic about the future earnings uh, potential of the firm and that may then serving as a negative signal cause stockholders to sell off their shares and that'll cause stock price to fall but this is an empirical question working capital deals with the short-term aspects of the firm's operations short-term assets or current assets and short-term liabilities which we refer to as current liabilities and so in this aspect of corporate finance the firm is seeking to make decisions concerning optimal levels of current assets and current liabilities ensuring that by not maintaining too large a size in current assets it is deploying much of its funds into long-term capital where the firm's core competency lies on the other hand a firm should be careful not to starve its liquidity situation 
because if you maintain a low level of current assets you may not have sufficient funds to run the business on a day-to-day -day basis the firm liquidity the firm's liquidity position would be limited would be starved that is but anyhow these are some of the issues that you deal with in a basic corporate finance class and this concludes this segment of the lecture in the next segment we'll give a general introduction of the agency problem and corporate governance.